Looking for a creative outlet? Do you want to develop the artist within? The heritage crafts aren't just in the museum. Plenty of people just like you are putting a modern spin on these traditional skills. One craft you may associate with the pioneers is spinning, but this historic craft is making a big comeback with lots of artisans. Spinning is an ancient textile art. No one knows where or how spinning was created, but archaeological evidence have string skirts dated about 20,000 years ago. It began by twisting plant and animal fibers together to form yarn or thread. Even rope was spun. For thousands of years, fiber was spun by hand using simple tools, and mass production only arose in the 18th century with the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. Hand spinning is a popular craft today, but for the early settlers in this region, it was how they got their yarn and thread to make all of their fabrics. A lot of the spinning wheels came from Scotland and England, and they'd bring their wheels over and then they would spin, because they'd have to spin, they'd have to make their clothing, their socks, and all their winter stuff. Their underclothes were even hand-spun wool. So, and then spinning was something the women would do at nighttime, and with a candlelight, I don't know how they did that, but <laughs> they used to do the spinning mostly at night, and it used to be with the sheep and everything, used to be a lot of work bees, They'd all get together with the sheep and they'd shear the sheep and it'd be, everyone would get together and do that and then they'd process the, the wool and then they would spin it and make all their clothing. So I think the spinning brought a lot of people together, a lot of the pioneers together. It was very important for them. Most textile crafts are associated with the females of the household, but spinning was an activity where everyone had a job to perform. Well, the uh, women used to do the spinning and the kids would do the drop spindling or they'd do the carding and the men would be in there. They'd be working too, you know, doing the, I think they did most of the dyeing and the carding. So everybody had a little part of doing something with it. Spinning is popular for a number of reasons. The first being you can create endless blends of fibers that will give you a unique one-of-a-kind yarn. Well, you could spin the fleece. There's different fleeces. There's cotton, there's silk. There's angora from the bunnies, there's mohair from angora goats, llama, alpaca, there's kiviat from muskox, then there's all the new fibers, there's, uh, there's bamboo and there's milk fibers, there's sea cell, injigo, which is corn, and then you can go into the bast fibers, which is the cotton, the rami, the hemp, so it, it goes on and on, there's all kinds of stuff out there. And that's the fun of it, because you could try something new and you can blend this together and you know, make your own unique yarn. You can tell that it's, it's hand done. You can tell because the colors are different. There might be a little bit of sparkle in it. The blends are different. You don't buy yarns that have the different blends in it. Dyes, when you get into the dyeing, you'll have the rainbow colors and the wool will start off as blue and go to green, then go to yellow. Like, you could do anything with it. As much fun as spinning is, most spinners have a great inspiration beyond creating designer yarn. One reward of spinning is taking that new yarn and using it in another textile craft, such as knitting. Well, I think there's more knitters now, too, and I think they want to, they're thinking, okay, I'm knitting, I'd like to make my own yarn to knit with. So I think they see it that way. And they see people doing it, and it just looks so nice and comfortable and relaxing. And, you know, they think, well, maybe I'll get into it for that. Maybe it's something unique that people don't usually do. You don't see a lot of people doing that. But you do see a lot more now, especially with the drop spindles. You see a lot of people sitting in the doctor's office with a drop spindle doing a bit of spinning. They want to make socks or a hat to match their coat or mitts, sweaters, vests, or if they want to spin to weave and make pillows and afghans and stuff. And also for stitchery too. You can spin a yarn fine enough to do needlepoint and cruel work. I've done stitchery pictures where you start right from the beginning and you spin your own yarn, then you dye it, and then you do your little picture and stuff and it's all you, you know, you've done everything to it. Like I made my father a scarf, and so I did all the spinning for it, and I took it downstairs and I wove it, so it was like a one-of-a-kind scarf just for him for his 70th birthday. And then I did the same for my aunt, I, or my sister-in-law, I also made her a scarf out of alpaca and silk, which was, I've spun alpaca, but never the two of them together, and spun up to a nice fine yarn, so it made a nice lacy scarf. So, you know, that's kind of special to get a gift like that, too. At least I think it would be very special that somebody has spent hours and hours to do and the thought process and everything. And 
It just makes you feel good that you can do something like that, you know. It's all you. It's all your decision of what to do, you know. You can change it. You can do whatever you want sort of thing. Spinning is a relaxing activity because of its repetitive motions, but there is a technique you need to master for this craft. Oh, you need to practice and practice and practice. But you just start off doing it and you just keep practicing it and you start off with a drop spindle. I believe drop spindle is the way to go because you have to work your hands. Once you get figure out your hands, what they're doing, then you can go to the spinning wheel because in the spinning wheel your feet are going too, so you've got all these things going. So if you, once you start with the drop spindle and you make your yarn, you understand what you're doing, then you go to the spinning wheel and you just keep doing it and working with your fingers and working with the fibers and preparation. If the uh, wool is prepared properly, it makes it easier to spin, which is nice too when you're first starting off. And you just keep practicing <laughs> and you will eventually get it. It will click and then it'll be natural for you. Another step in spinning is getting the fibers ready to spin. For most, this starts at the farm. You'd start off with the wool. You'd have to get the fleece, and you'd get it right from the farmer, so you'd have to wash it, which is, takes a little while to wash it and dry it. Then you would flick card it. Then you would card it and make it into roll eggs. And then you'd get in to start spinning. So you'd spin it, you'd make a one ply, and you'd fill two bobbins. So and you'd take the two bobbins and spin them together, and you'd make a two ply yarn. Then you'd have to finish that by washing it to set the twist. And then you're all ready to start knitting or weaving or crocheting, whatever you want to do with it. You can dye the fleece or you can dye the yarn, whatever you want. When you buy it from a spinner's flock, that means the sheep has been well cared for and it's not as dirty and they really skirt it, which is getting really all the dirt and everything off the sides. So it's a bit dirty, but you still, you wash it up and it comes up nice and clean and then you're ready to go. Once you've made the decision to start spinning, you will need to invest in some tools, starting with a spinning wheel. Well, the new ones, I would say around $500, I think, end up. The antique wheels, you might get them cheaper, but an antique wheel is very tricky to spin on. It has a little bit of attitude over the years. But a brand new wheel, it'd be $500 and up. And that's just a spinning wheel. Then you need to buy all the other stuff, too. <laughs> well, you'll need carters. You'll need the hand carters. For one, that's very important because you're going to have to blend in the wool and everything. And then you have your spinning wheel with your different bobbins and the different ratios. And then after you've your lazy kate, that's where your bobbins sit on. After you've, you've got to make the skein, so you need a nitty knotty, which is a funny shaped thing. So yeah, a nitty knotty, and then you wash your skein, and then you have ball winder, or you could do it by hand, make it into a ball. So that's basically all the tools. A threading hook that comes with a spinning wheel. There's other stuff, but then they're not necessary, you know. You could build up to those. Like in years past, spinning is still a social activity. A local spinning guild can provide examples and fellowship to keep an avid spinner inspired. We have a show and tell, and everybody shows what they've been doing on it. It could be a skein, it could be something that's finished, half finished. And, you know, it's pretty amazing to see what's out there and the ideas and the thinking of why they did this and, and that. And, you know, if they're making baby clothes or whatever. So that's inspiring for people, just to come and see that. There's quite a few people that do a lot of spinning. And that's you get your ideas from, too. You say, oh, that's kind of neat. Maybe I'll try something like that. Or, well, we have a big guild, the Huronia Spinning Guild. And we meet once a month, and we seem to be getting more members all the time. And we meet, and we, have, we just sit, and we spin, and we chat, and we often have workshops. We have people come in and do different talks. We have people that have learned a new technique within our guild and they'll show everybody how to do it. And you see all the different fibers and what people have made. And it's pretty amazing some of the stuff they come up with. A craft like spinning opens the door to many creative possibilities. Still, it is the meditative process of spinning itself that a lot of people are attracted to. It's relaxing and it's nice. You can sit and do it in front of the TV and it doesn't bother anybody. And kind of you get in the zone and you just keep doing it and you just kind of forget about time and time passes and you know and it's something different to do. For more information on spinning or if you would like to take a course in one of the textile crafts check out the Simcoe County Arts and Crafts Association website at www.skaka.ca.